This is Vineet, and I am I'm a cop. Well, the, the brochure says that uh, this has to be about non-conformity, beyond conformity, and you've got to stand up for what you believe in. Be an independent thinker, convert your ideas into actions, and inspire the world. Unshackle yourself from the pull of pull of following the herd. Well, I've made it obvious that I'm a policeman. And what is not so confirm conformist in my mind is the thought that policing is too important to be left to the police. But if I say that to my colleagues and my juniors, they will not allow me to stand here. They'll beat me to pulp. And part of the reason is because police has probably been almost always taken for granted. It's out there. It is doing its job. Well, I'll start with a disclaimer. There have been two policemen before me on Ted Ranchi. The first one came here after he quit the job. The second one who came here quit the job right after. But I'm a non-conformist. I'm not going to conform to that pattern. So I'll, I'll stay on with the job. So you expect me next time. The other, other part is a story. The story is about two kids where I was a, supposed to be a chief guest and they were right behind me and they were whispering I had not gone to the stage yet and they were saying, in India, of course, ya to army wala hai ya police wala hai. The other one said, nahi army wala ganja nahi hota hai. Zaroor thulla hai. Well, we start confirming very early about a lot of people and a lot of things. The other part, I was reading the brochure, of course, and it all comes from that. I told you a dictum, policing is too important to be left to the police. And in the brochure, my introduction is very short and sweet. That's how I'd like, like it to be. Vinit is, of course, very flowery. He's the cyber expert. And uh, I like to call it Bheja Fry. He's the Bheja, I'm the Fry. And it helps me a lot because people don't expect me to be the brainy guy, not to talk anything, any sense at all. So he'll talk the sense. The other part of the story is that my biodata contains all sorts of mini stories, let us say, and they are in two parts. One is a short bio, the other is a long, long biodata, long CV. I suspect that it was the two-page one that was sent to Ted because that is my way of telling some people that I'm not, not going to turn up. But somehow, I think they saw through it. It says, he writes poetry. Of course, they would say, no, 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 can't be. A cop can't write poetry. He writes short stories. No, 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 doesn't confirm. Actually, I did that all in school like everybody else, so no, nothing special about it. What I'm trying to tell you is, to go back to that story, when, I'm, when I became a cop, I realized, till the day I was not a cop, I was thinking, what is it about to be become a policeman? The day I became a cop, deeper into my career, I started thinking, I'm just like any other citizen, but I feel different. I'm made to feel different. Can it be different with the society? Can it be a little different so that everybody comes on board and policing is a little more exciting, not, not something that you have to do it for yourself. And basically you are trying to fend, fend for yourself and somehow protect the society. And it's almost, almost felt thankless. And that is when I heard about cyber technology. And that is what I'm coming to now. Cyber peace is something I thought about. And I realized 
not a few years ago, a few years ago, that crime fighting in the digital age is going to be different. It is going to be more like peace building, but it is more important that it's going to be collaborative. It is collaborative policing. You have heard that jingle, Jo tera hai, wo mera hai. Right? Of course, every police wala who approaches you will say, Jo tera hai, wo mera hai. <laughs> well, there's a second line to that. Jo mera hai, wo tera. Right? I like to say that. I'd like to say that as a policeman. And I like to say that everybody must collaborate for policing. That's the way to go. And the cyber world tells us that that is the way to go. A quick definition of what is cyber peace. If as policemen and as collaborators for cyber peace, all the citizens together, you and me, want peace. Cyber peace is defined as a universal order of cyberspace built on wholesome state of tranquility, absence of disorder. I have underlined them, provided the emphasis. What I'm trying to say is, even if this is an ITU definition, there is a catch in that. The catch is very, very, very important. And that is, today, peace in the real world is probably going to be dictated by peace in the cyber world. And we, the policemen, are strapped with that enormous responsibility. But there's only one problem. Cyber peace is not going to be automatic. We got to work for it. We got to make peace happen. All these disorders, cyber crime, cyber espionage, whatever names you provide, cyber terrorism, cyber war. Very interestingly, everything in the real world in the name of conflict will probably have a digital footprint very quickly. And it, it's not very far from now that probably every crime that happens will have a digital footprint. Are the policemen prepared for it? A digital footprint that the policeman has to unravel of the crime criminal and the crime. As I said, everything that happens in the cyber world will be mirrored in the real world. If every crime has a digital footprint, every time you use the mobile, you are making a digital footprint. Is the police system up for it? The answer is obviously no. So that's a confession I'll make in front of you. The police cannot handle this alone. The police cannot handle this alone. Since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. That is the UNESCO preamble. I've just paraphrased it and said, since, since much conflict and disorder in the world, today we'll have a footprint in the cyber world. It is in the same cyber world that measures must be taken to ensure order and cyber peace. And as I said, police or law enforcement can be only one actor, only one of the many actors for cyber peace. So it's all about collaboration. Dictum one, I told you in the right in the beginning, policing is too important to be left to the police. Everybody must pitch in. Dictum two, every policeman is a citizen in uniform. I felt that soon after joining. But what is more important, I want to tell you this, dictum three, every citizen is a policeman without uniform. Every one of you is a policeman without uniform. You must believe in that. And when you believe in that, you will believe what you must have heard as an engineer, as a person who, has, who, who, who is very familiar with computers and the digital, it's about crowdsourcing. This is something that I want to flag. We have to crowdsource crime fighting. And this is, this is what, what we are talking about now. I call it the era of crowd policing. Everybody has to pitch in. Everybody must come in. Every citizen must feel that he has a burden of duty to also be a policeman, to guard his own liberty, to guard his own freedom, and to protect society. It is about cyber collaboration. That is the way to go for new age policing. People, police collaboration to prevent, detect, and punish crimes. It is possible in the collaborative policing world. And I would say, if people like Vineet, and that is why we are here together, this is about collaboration. He is a private expert, cyber ethical hacker, 
an expert in cybercrime uh, investigation. I am a policeman, and we have collaborated for the last few years. We have collaborated, and we feel that that is a way to go. And more and more people are now joining this movement. At least in Ranchi, we have a lot of volunteers coming in, and that is where we have formed the Cyber Peace Corps. This is community policing redefined. It is not necessarily that you gather bodily together. You can be on the net, and you have seen the Arab Spring happen. People first Twittered and Facebooked each other and mailed each other, and that is when the gathering happened, first in the cyberspace and then on the Tahrir Square. So let us police ourselves the best we can, and the net offers us the best bet for that. The digital platform offers us the best bet for that. The government is best, which polices the least. I certainly believe in that. And the best way to go about governance and policing is to involve the citizens at every stage. The need of the hour, people police collaboration hubs, where more and more citizens come together with the police. And it is happening across many countries, in small suburbs, in small towns, in small counties. Predictive policing is happening. Data is being created by users who are not necessarily policemen, who are just pooling in the resources. And data about crime and criminals is being generated. Crowd policing will be able to stand up to crime. Otherwise, it will be a lone furrow for the police. What will the police do then? That must be the question on your mind. What is the police going to do then? The police is going to be the catalyzer. It's going to be the prime mover. It's going to be coordinating this. It's going to be the facilitator. And finally, it will be about people-police partnership. I call it the P3. And that is a formula I have given to Vineet. And only yesterday, we have set up what is called the Cyber Peace Foundation. The P3 formula has, has come to fruition. And I hope it will have a future which is bigger, much more meaningful. Here is one such collaboration hub. We call it the Cyber Peace Foundation. And this is what Vineet is going to talk about. Thank you so much. It's uh, really a privilege for me to stand with Hassan Pradhan sir and speak on this TED talk. Uh, I just want to share something while coming to the venue. I met a friend of mine, an old school friend. He said, Vineet, you are here at TED? I'm like, yeah, I'm here. Well, how come, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, when did you start taking interest in such conferences and all? So I said, of late I've started taking interest. I'm a speaker for your information. He was really shocked. He said, hey, you, in fact, you used to struggle in your studies when you were in class 7th or 8th. So you're the teacher, in fact, a Sanskrit teacher I still remember, she used to find out the places where she used to mark me and, in fact, uh, uh, take me to the passing score. So, I mean, he was shocked. I mean, how come I am here and talking in such a conference? So this is how, in fact, I'll take you through the journey how I started. In fact, everything what I did, I started from Jharkhand. Uh, again, my journey started when my dad gifted me a computer uh, and again, an internet connection. Uh, back then in 98, 99, when I was hardly 10 years old, I used to connect to the internet. I used to dial a STD line and then connect to the internet. And I used to surf for resources, and that's how, I mean, I started chatting with people online, and people from a hacker group, basically. And these hackers actually were destructive. One of them showed me how to hack Bank of America. So I was like, okay, I, I'm interested. Show me more. So what he did, he hacked my PC, and she, he showed, see, these, these are your folders, these are your files. So I got very curious. I requested him, please help me out. Please guide me. And I want to come into this field, I want to contribute something. So he showed me, he gave me some, some tips and tricks and in fact some resources from which I started learning myself. And back, I mean, two, two to three years I started researching. And during the school days, somehow in fact, I, I, uh, my mom is here. I told my mom, mom, I don't want to study. I want to give up my studies. class tak zyada nahi hota My mom said, just two more years, 10th karlo, uske baad, it's up to you. So you can quit your studies. I thought, okay, fine, two years kisi tarah pad lete hain. When I was in ninth, then that is the time I thought, why not float an organization? I was always like, I want to start my organization of my own. I mean, my own organization. So that's how, I mean, those days, actually, the cybercrime thing, it had recently started. 
some hackers from Pakistan had defaced sites of India. And that's how I, I thought, why not uh, I start an organization to defend such hacking attempts and all. So I started my organization called National Anti-Hacking Group uh, back then when I was in class ninth. Somehow I cleared my class 10th. Uh, I, I scored around 70%, uh, uh, which was, again, my dad was so happy that he distributed sweets in the colony that I finally passed my class 10th. Then after that, my mother said, two more, two more years to go, just clear 12th. So I was like, okay, fine. I, I'll, I'll uh, in fact, uh, clear by then, I'll run my organization also. And I landed up into army school. And again, some of the officers, in fact, they were like uh, really happy to know the area of my work, like security and hacking, what I used to do. And one of them actually gave me an opportunity to lecture senior officers at College of Military Engineering, Pune, when I was in class 11th. So I was like, I was a student who used to stay away from studies and everything. And now I'm getting an opportunity to lecture senior officers of College of Military Engineering, Pune. Somehow I went there and luckily you call it, I mean, the lecture went very good. And in fact, I was appreciated for the lecture. After that, again, I met SN Pradhan sir. Uh, the ex-DG VD Ram sir, he introduced me to SN Pradhan sir. And that was a turning point in my life. I spoke to SN Pradhan sir and I said, sir, this is how I mean, uh, I see the future in a different way. Like today the cyber crimes which are happening is like small virus intrusions and these things. But the future, I mean, the crimes would be at a different scale. I mean, it will be a very sophisticated cyber crime. So that is how we decided, both of us, like we should set up a cyber defense research center. That was in 2007, just after uh, I cleared my class 12th examination. So I spoke to SN Pradhan, and SN Pradhan sir immediately said, okay, yes, we'll set up, we'll set, uh, 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 give a proposal to the government and then get it cleared by the government. It took around four years to clear that. And sir also said, see, if you want to join this organization, you need to be a graduate. So after clearing, I mean, uh, my uh, aim was to clear 12th. Now I thought, okay, fine, if I want to join this organization, I'll have to be a graduate. So that's how I, again, landed up into the university. I uh, started working, I mean, uh, studying my undergraduate course, and eventually started running this organization, National Anti-Hacking Group. Because it was, it was a social organization, and it was a very difficult, those days, in Ranchi, in Jharkhand, to sell the idea of cyber crime. I used to speak to people that I have set up a social organization on cyber crime. So people used to say, I mean, oh, hey, aise faltu time pass kar rahe, kya, sab kuch, kuch nahi hai, aise time barbaad kar rahe. That is what they said. So it was really difficult for me those days. To sustain the social organization and the social activity, I founded a for-profit organization called Security Brigade. So this organization, again, in fact, we, we were earning good revenues in this organization. It was, by God's grace, we did very well. In fact, I was one of the top five student entrepreneurs in Global Student Entrepreneur Awards in Kansas City. So the organization was doing fairly well. And in fact, the revenues which we earned from the for-profit organization, a part of the revenue we uh, used to donate it uh, for the social cause in the National Anti-Hacking Group. So that is how this thing worked. But one fine day after the money started flowing in, there was some rift between the partners and so finally I quit that particular thing. By then the Cyber Defense Research Center had come up. And during this period, I had started lecturing into different universities, colleges, institutions, even IITs and IIMs had gone as a uh, visiting and as a guest lecturer and all. So it was like I wanted to do something, something for the betterment, something for the uh, social welfare of the society. So this opportunity was something which was coming up to join the Jharkhand Police as Chief Technology Officer. I had some better offers also, but this was something which I thought, no, by taking this up, this is not just money. This is about contributing and doing something for the welfare and the, for the benefit of the society. I immediately took the job. And during this period, in fact, I used to see several cases, several cases where people, in fact, victims, they used to approach me and say, sir, uh, our Facebook ID has been hacked. My child's Facebook ID has been hacked and it's been hacked on Facebook. Pe, dhamki diya ja rahe ki mujhse is jagah pe milo nahi to main tumhe defame kar dunga i'll morph your pictures and put it on the social networking website some cases where i'll take your number i'll publish it on the on the pornographic websites and i'll defame you 
So lots of such cases. And most of these cases, people used to come and, and approach me and say, sir, personal level please go kar dije. We don't want to interface a thana, nito badnami hogi. Bachi ki shadi nahi hogi. These, these were the issues which were coming up. Unofficially, jitna hum log help kar sakte the, hum log, we used to help them or madad kar paate the. But recently, there has been an increased rate or crimes of this sort has been started, you know, uh, increasing. So this was like, we felt this is the right time, in fact, there's no such organization which actually helps the victims of cyber crime and helps them to, you know, guide them or maybe uh, help them out and uh, take them out of uh, this particular situation. So this is why, I mean, I worked with Cyber Peace Found as, uh, with Cyber Defense Research Center of Jharkhand Police as a Chief Technology Officer. And in December, actually, I resigned from my post because I thought that it, uh, there's a better opportunity which is calling me to serve the society and to the nation. Because, uh, I'll show you something, it's not just the cyber crime. I'll give you a case study. I mean, there has been a very special case study of a U Iran nuclear plant meltdown, where a single virus was responsible for the meltdown of the entire nuclear facility in Iran. And yes, in Jharkhand, again, this is a case of around three years back, when a victim, when a victim actually approached a police station, or uh, I mean, he, uh, she went to the officer, and she said, sir, my Facebook ID has been hacked. The officer wanted to help, and uh, normally there's a, uh, you know, the, there is a resistance among the officer. They don't want to take cases on cyber crime and all, because they think that if they take it, they won't be technically uh, be able to solve the particular problem. So, but this officer wanted to help. So, he started asking the victim, ki beta, aapka kaun sa book hack hua hai, book ka author ka naam kya hai? Such was the level of awareness three, four years back. But things changed during our tenure in CDRC and uh, we started communicating to the officer, training the officer, and now they, are, they have started accepting complaints. So, what I wanted to show was that in the near future, everything will be in cyberspace. You talk about your car tomorrow. If you, if you have seen the movie Die Hard 4, the movie was released in 2007. People used to say, when the movie was released in 2007, people used to say, this is not possible. But today, as I stand before you, I'll say it is all possible. Traffic lights, be it cars, be it trains, be it the critical infrastructures, your mobile phone, everything can be controlled. And everything will be on the internet in the times to come. One interesting case study in US, what happened was a hacker hacked a hospital management system of a hospital in US and changed the prescription of a, uh, of a uh, uh, basically the patient. The nurse came, she saw the prescription on the screen and she injected the same medicines to that patient. The patient immediately collapsed. So this is how, this is how the virtual world is getting connected uh, uh, to the real world. And lots of cases of this sort has started happening. And so, so everything, will, tomorrow, if your cars will be running on internet, any hacker can hack your car, can break fail your car, and can crash your car and lead you to uh, some uh, circumstances like this. So, Cyber Peace Foundation, again, is again an NGO, because we, we see the next generation of World War to be a cyber war. Cyberspace has already been announced as the fifth dimension of war. That means all the war, means the next world war would certainly be a cyber war where all these critical infrastructures will be target. Just imagine a day when you have your mobile phone and you won't be able to work with that mobile phone because there are no signals into that mobile phone and no internet in your computers or maybe your laptops. So this will be uh, uh, an, an example of a cyber war. Today, a speaker showed something about uh, 3D printing. Now that 3D printer can also be used to print weapons, to make weapons. That same 3D printer. So this is something which will happen. Lots of issues will happen. So that led us, in fact, experts from various sectors like Army, Navy, Air Force, Defense, Media, all of us, we collaborated and we formed the Cyber Peace Foundation to actually establish peace and harmony in the cyber world. Yes. And uh, through this, we have launched various initiatives like Cyber Peace Corps, 
which is to build a strong volunteer force where you all can uh, participate, you all can volunteer activities of the foundation. In fact, students can also come as volunteer, uh, as interns and work for the organization. This, I mean, uh, the day when we, uh, I mean, uh, during the tenure of me running as a CEO of National Anti-Hacking Group, students from IM, Indore, and various organizations had come to study about National Anti-Hacking Group. So, because they also felt that this is a need in the near future. So, this is why we started this Cyber Peace Foundation, and we have the Cyber Peace Month, which will be running full uh, uh, till the end of February, and we have launched various campaigns, uh, and uh, this I request every one of you to come forward and lend your hands, and let's make a better future and better world to live in. Thank you. Thank you.